Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to lay out a kitchen, including where to put cabinets, where to put your appliances to be most usable, how to set up your countertops, and where to put your sink. I'm also gonna go through some kitchen design fundamentals, like where to put pass-throughs, how to account for clearances for stoves and dishwashers, and how to maximize usable light. Later on, I'm gonna dive into plumbing, HVAC, and electrical basics to start you off on your kitchen design journey. Set up your room dimensions. Okay, the first thing you wanna do is figure out the size of each of the rooms that you're working with. I mean, in this case, I have two rooms that I'm working with. One of the, them is the existing kitchen, and one of them is where the new kitchen is going to go. The existing kitchen is seven foot 10 deep by roughly 20 long. But what I'm gonna do is set up a grid pattern using the marquee tool here, the rectangle tool. And my scale is one centimeter equals one real world inch. So if I'm going to have a grid that is a foot by foot, I will do 12 by 12, hit okay. I'm gonna get my grid piece here and that looks pretty good. I will update the stroke to two so that you can see it a little bit better. And then all I'm going to do is move these. I'm also gonna add a fill because I wanna make sure I can select it easier. And then when, in Illustrator, if you double click, you go into isolation mode and it makes it very easy to select only the object you're working with. So I'm gonna organize this right into the corner here. And what I'm gonna do is duplicate this as many times as I need to fill up the space. So I can move this, I hold down Alt and then move it over to the left. Uh, once you've done that, you can hit Command D, which in Illustrator is repeat the action, and that will duplicate all of your grid pieces all the way to the end of the row. Now, select all of that, Command G will group it, and you're gonna do the same thing. So you move it up, hold down Alt, that will repeat it. Again, same deal, hit Command D, and you will get a full grid showing the layout of the room. So that's my foot, one foot by one foot square grid for the existing kitchen. Now, all I'm gonna do, again, go into isolation mode, actually just use that one. So I'm gonna choose all of these, and I will group them. And the same thing, hold down Alt, move them up, move them into the new room. So what you also wanna be aware of is where your anchor point is or where your frame of reference is in the room. So for these two rooms, because this is going to be size as and this is going to be um, my definitive blueprint for where everything goes, you want to make your anchor point right in the corner of the room. So this, this point here would be the corner of this room. That's my anchor. And then this point here is the corner of this room. Now I'm using the bottom right corner in this case. You could use any corner you prefer. Uh, in this case, the reason I'm doing that is because my kitchen and sink are gonna go into this area here. And I would prefer to have the overlap on more of a dead space, which is this top wall up here. So get back into here. Same deal, I'm gonna choose this. I don't think it's gonna work there. No, Command D doesn't work there, so I'm just gonna duplicate this and grab it with Alt, snap it up in place, move it up to the top, and you've got your finished grid for both rooms. In the case of any excess, press A, and you can do a point select tool, hit delete twice, and that will get rid of any excess for your grid. So you can see already that was fairly quick, and we've got a grid laid out that's size as, a foot by foot, and we can start dropping elements into it and planning the design. So in my case, I would add the grid over to here as well, but because this is dead space and because this is a window over here, you've got a lot of light coming in there. Uh, this will actually end up being a bench over here. Uh, so I'm not gonna add the grid to that space because I know that nothing's going in there. But if you did have an opening here, then you could just copy all these pieces here and move them over. Common kitchen dimensions. The next stage is looking at actual common widths of your appliances and countertops and any of the fixtures that you're going to have in the kitchen. So the reason for this is to be able to quickly move things around in your layout and know that it will work when you go to buy your cabinets. Cabinets are one of those things that are very tricky when it comes to layout and dimensions because there are quite a few different sizes, but there are a lot of common ones. So you can see right here that there are quite a few common sizes, foot, 15 inches, 18, 24, 30, 36. The height of cabinets is for the floor standing cabinets is generally 36. You've got three feet for cabinet height. For cabinet depth, you're looking at 24 inches. And these are very standard sizes for cabinets. 
So you can go by that, at least in North America. I put counter depth here 25 inches deep. The reason 25 is because I've got a one inch overhang for the counter top. So that's just my own measurement and 36 inches tall. Your sink, my sink is gonna be 22 by 32. The fridge is gonna be 27 by 35. Again, fridges are a uh, asterisk item because fridges come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. For my application, I did a bit of research. I'm gonna have a slightly bigger fridge, double door, and that's where this comes in. Cooktops as well are the same scenario as your fridge. The one that I'm using is a pretty typical size. It's gonna be 20 inches deep and 30 inches wide. That way I know exactly how it will fit in the size as layouts. Another thing that I did very quickly in Illustrator was start to outline a bit of a legend for what I was going to do when it came to outlets and countertops. Now, you don't need to worry about the outlets so much right now. I'm not gonna deal with those until a little bit later in the video, so stay around for that. The countertops though, I, I have a legend for the countertops and the upper cabinets as well. Sketch it up. Okay, so this is where things start to get a little bit more fun. At this point, what you should do is take the screen that you have, print out four or five pieces of it, four or five pages, just start sketching all over it. Start drawing in where you want pieces to go. Because this is size as, and because we know roughly that two by two of these is two feet squared, you can start drawing in exactly what you want in the location that you want it. Now, I knew originally that I wanted to have kind of an island coming out here, going across there, maybe uh, cabinets going here, the uppers would go there. We had a couple of cabinets here. Now I'm, I'm not following the grid exactly as I should be, so that's the whole point of sketching it out. But this gives you a very quick and a very rough idea of where things can go. Because I already kind of roughly know where I'm putting things, I'm just throwing them in here. So we've got a stove that could go in here. We've got your burners there. I wanna have a breakfast bar over here, so I've got a couple of stools that I can put in here. I know roughly that my table is gonna go over here, so you know that's where this is gonna go. Uh, and again, I'm doing this on a tablet, but if you print this out and you start to sketch out where you want things to go, it's very quick and it's very easy to move things around. You can see right away, I mean, it's a bit rough, but you've already got a pretty good layout in terms of where you want things to fit. Now, this is great because say you want a kitchen island, for example, we can go back and we can get rid of all these pieces and we can say, well, in this case, I want, in this case, I want to have an island in here. And because you've got your size as grid, your one by one grid, your one foot by one foot, you can start to sketch things in and start to understand a bit more how each piece will fit. And this becomes really useful for deciding the exact location and the exact uh, layout of things. Now you could do a breakfast bar over here. You could have two stools on the opposite side and you could have your stove in this area here. Very quickly, you can see that a handful of layout options become available, and then you could have a row of shelving over here as well. So you've got your shelves. That already starts to look pretty good. So the only issue with this design then, as you can see, is that you've got very limited space here, and then very limited space here. So one of the main considerations for a kitchen design is how people walk through the space and how they use the space. So like I mentioned before, I've got the front door here, and that comes into the space right here. So what I would like to do is to have people to be able to flow through the space very naturally. I'm gonna put a table roughly here, which will work out fine. You just have to be careful that there's enough space for them to walk around, enough working space for them to work here, and enough working space for them to get into the other rooms. In this case, this is the dining room over here. So you can see that foot traffic is a big consideration when it comes to designing these spaces, and you really wanna be aware of where people are going to move. This is a hallway here, so people are gonna be walking out, out this way into the dining room. To get to other rooms of the house, you want to be able to flow through both ways here, and you wanna be able to flow through both ways here and you want to be able to flow through both ways here very naturally and you definitely don't want any obstructions in this area or in these areas here so you can see already you very quickly outlined a rough idea for what the layout could be so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start to put some cabinets and appliances and things into the layout and I will show you how that is gonna look now at this point it is useful to talk about the kitchen triangle and that is something that is fairly common in kitchen design where you've got your fridge your stove and your sink. And what you wanna try and do is have a comfortable distance between all these three things so that when you're cooking, you've got your location here, your cleanup with your dishwasher will be here, your prep area could be here, either within arm's reach or within a step or two. And then my dishwasher will go down in this location. I am going to start to put things together and I will show you exactly how that looks in a mini build montage. It's time to bend time.
Okay, you can see we've come pretty far from our original sketch, which is great. We've got most of the layout items complete in terms of the cabinets and the countertops and all of our appliances. We've got our kitchen table set up right there, which is perfect. We've got a little bar area, which is great so that you can socialize while you're cooking. I just mirrored the angle here to mirror the window. So aesthetically, that's gonna look really good. And it's also a little bit functional because I've got a foot of space under here. So I'm gonna use this as our garbage and recycling area. And then we can slide out our bins and use them anywhere we want in the kitchen. So that's a great use of space. So that's gonna look all finished up top and down below, and then we've got a useful area for garbage and recycling. So when you're doing dishes and you're loading the dishwasher, you're gonna have a lot of natural light flooding in from this direction. You're gonna have a lot of natural light flooding in from this direction, because remember, this is a giant window right here. So this is a great location for that. So you probably wouldn't even need to use indoor lighting when you are cleaning up during the day. And you might be asking yourself, why did I put the fridge so far from everything else? Well, in reality, it's not that far away. You do have a bit of a distance, but because the countertop does overlap, when you're going to get things to cook, you basically just need to walk over and put them on here. And then there's going to be an outlet over here, and this smaller countertop space is going to be the zone for our coffee and tea and shake area. So that's more than large enough for that. So we'll have a kettle and a blender in this area. And then we can keep all of our drink supplies in this upper cabinet here. If you wanna see this entire project get completed, so I am going to show every step of the process. I'm going to be destroying this wall down here. I'm going to be adding all the plumbing in here. I'm going to be doing all the electrical work all through here. So if you like what you see and you want to see this entire kitchen be built from start to finish, I'm going to outline every step of the way and I'm going to give as much detail as I can. And then if you have a project like this, you'll be well equipped to handle it. Okay, next I'm going to talk about lighting. And this is very important because lighting plays a huge role in how your kitchen looks, how the aesthetic feels, and just the overall feel of the kitchen. So in this example, we've got natural light coming from three places. We've got this pass through here, which is going to have natural light coming through this way. And you've got a window that's just down here and you've got an entrance that's below there as well, a double door. You've got another big window over here so that's gonna let in a lot of light. And then you've got a bit of ambient light that's gonna be reflected through here, but not a whole lot. So you will get some light there, but I'm gonna say, you know, 50% in terms of light diffusion over in that area. So your natural light plays a big role, and that's part of the reason why I personally wanted to move my kitchen into this area, because I do have a lot of natural light that's gonna be flooding this space here. You can start to lay out where your primary lighting is and then where your secondary lighting is. Your primary lighting is going to be the main light source in the room. So in this case, it's going to be pot lights. Now pot lights are pretty easy to lay out because you typically just want to have them evenly spaced throughout the room. In this case, I generally would put them about three feet apart and maybe add a couple in this space to make sure that there's a lot of diffuse light bouncing off of everything and softening up the shadows in the room. That's gonna look good, but how are the shadows gonna play off of everything as well? So when you're in these work spaces, let's say you're standing here. If you have your lighting back here and you don't have any lighting in this area here, you're gonna have some hard shadows filling up this space right here. And if you're gonna work here, you're gonna have your shadow hitting here. And if you didn't have this ambient light coming in here, or maybe another light source hitting it from here, this actually would get fairly dark. So you have to think about that when you're planning your lighting. Now in my case, it's not a big deal because like I said, I do have a lot of natural light coming through during the day. And because I do have a lot of, of lights in this area, you're gonna get a lot of diffuse light hitting this work surface. So this is okay, I'm not too worried about that. Same with over here. So down in this area, you've got your light sources coming in here and they're going to be hitting this area here. Now realistically, if the lights are literally on this three foot line, this is three feet from the wall, then your light source is gonna be bouncing almost directly off of the top of where you're standing, which is fine because you, your, your cast shadow then is gonna be straight down. So this area here is gonna be fairly well lit. You're not gonna to have to worry about that work surface all that much, and that'll be good as well. Over here, you don't have to worry about lighting too much because this will all diffuse nicely in this area. It's all wide open, and that's not a workspace. Your fridge is just here but your eating space is gonna have some nice ambient light as well. So the stove is another area where you want to be aware of your lighting. I will have a range hood over the stove here, hanging from the ceiling, and then you're gonna get some light diffusing out of that, going in all directions. What I might do is get rid of this pot light here, so no light there, and just have you know the lights in these locations. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and that will work well in the majority of the room with these nine lights the nine pot lights the stove light 
that's going to be good primary and secondary lighting for the majority of the workspace. Now, I am going to add a few more lights down here through the pass through. They're going to be pendant lights and they are going to add a little bit of architectural flair, I guess you want to call it, but they're also going to add a bit more lighting that's going to come down into this space here. So at night or, you know, at dusk or in the morning, uh, you can flip the switch here and you'll, you can just throw these lights on. Clearances for oven and dishwasher. I had the dishwasher in this location. Now, initially it doesn't seem like a bad idea because you clean, you move your dishes over here and it's not a big deal. But when you open the dishwasher door, it does stretch out right into your walking lane. So that's no good. So I moved that over into its current location and then when the door opens, you've got no problem for your clearances here because you're typically gonna be standing on this side of the dishwasher. The other clearance you need to look for is your fridge clearances and your oven clearances. So the fridge obviously is no problem. You've got two doors that might open here. There's lots of room. You've got your oven opening over here, which again is lots of room. So you can see that in the off chance that you potentially have your dishwasher and your oven open, you've got quite a bit of area to navigate and realistically you could, you could move through these spaces no problem. Electrical. My primary lighting, which is the pot lights, these lights here, are going to be on a two-way switch. So when you come into the room here, you've got your switch there. You've got two switches here. So one of these switches is for the pot lights here. The other switch is going to be for the lights here, which are not in the diagram yet. I will run wire up through the ceiling from these lights all the way over, basically zigzagging around to all of these lights and then doubling back to my three-way switch. And then the breaker panel in my house is in the basement over in this area. Uh, so I would run it over to there as well, obviously, but that is the primary wiring diagram for the primary lights. And then there are a handful of other lights, electrical outlets that need to be accounted for. Typically what I will do is I've got some outlets up on the cabinetry here. So you've got some good spacing here. So if you want to hook up appliance on this side, you can work over in this space. If you want to work in this space, you've got an outlet. And if you want to work in this space, you've got an outlet. So those are perfect. The other outlet is down in this corner here. This outlet is for a kettle and a drink station. This outlet over here is for whatever we decide to put here. And then if we decide to put a toaster or something over here or whatever we want, I've got another outlet over here. To adhere to code, any outlet that is within three feet of any water source, so anything that's within three feet of this sink, which would apply to this outlet and this outlet here, you do need to have a GFI breaker, um, GFI outlet in those areas to meet code. So remember that. And as far as the other electrical concerns are, I have a range hood here that I need to run wiring through the ceiling to. And I've got a 40 or 60 amp oven outlet that will go here. And again, that's going to run through the floorboards and then over to the breaker, which would be on the other side. And then I'm also going to have another outlet because why not on the side of the peninsula out here. Heating, ventilation and cold air. For kitchen, the primary concern for HVAC other than your typical furnace and air conditioning supply and return vents is your range hood. So my range hood is gonna go right here, obviously over the stove. My floor joists in the ceiling run this way. That's obviously not to scale because they're on 16 inches uh, on center. But what I will do with the range hood is I will run the ductwork parallel to the joists, go through the wall outside into my garage area, which is up here. Apologies for the handwriting, it's awful. Turn right all the way out to the outer wall and then put a vent cap out there. Plumbing. Okay, so on to plumbing. So in my existing kitchen, which actually is in the lower area of this room here, I have a sink and I have my water hookups, my, my water, my hot and cold water supply lines, and I have my drain lines here, and then the dishwasher is over here. So what I'm gonna have to do is run all of these lines, the supply lines and the drain lines across this wall, and then all the way up here, uh, the joists again are running this way on the floor. So this will all be parallel to the floor joists underground. And then what will happen is all of these will run up to the sink and the dishwasher and supply both of them with hot and cold water. And so the drain goes this way and it's gonna follow the same route as the supply line. So it basically goes all the way back down, all the way across, and I will connect to the existing drainage system, which will dump it out into the street somewhere and hopefully not into a river, but we'll see. Sometimes if you have a fridge that has a ice maker or a water machine, you would probably have to run a line up there and supply that so you could get some 
you know, water coming to that. But I'm not gonna have that in this case. And that's a very quick overview of how the plumbing is going to work. Obviously, there's gonna be some details involved in how that all operates, but that's where it's going to go in terms of the plan. All right, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe because everything that you just saw in the video is going to be done in real life. I'm going to be tearing out my old kitchen, moving it to a new room, and showing you exactly how to do everything I just described. And in a lot more detail, this was a very basic, very primer kind of video to at least get you started and get you thinking about if you wanna build a kitchen, this is how you can start to do it.